Those tackles only lasted about two, three carries. And he's looking at the, the defense, the running back and the wide receivers. Keyshawn Johnson, I think, has got to really be getting a lot more man coverage of that great game that Jeff Graham had last week against the Colts. Keyshawn coming across in motion. Whitney Anderson gets the first call, the fullback for the New York Jets. He's stopped by Ted Washington. Let's look at that Bills defense. Washington was the question mark. Oh, we talked about Bruce Smith against the pass, and Hanson's good against the pass. The key guy in the front, though, is Ted Washington. He's playing with his banged-up, hyper-extended elbow. He may not last the whole game. The linebackers, David White again for Bryce Pop, has been inact inactivated with that bad groin. Matt Stevens, a big hitter, got his first career interception last week. Second down and eight. Right to throw, has protection time, deep over the middle, and it is incomplete. Whoa, Jeff Graham, the intended receiver, and he was dead. Well, that's Kurt Dulles coming from that deep safety, you know, and that's the changeup that the Buffalo defense gives you, Charlie. They'll, they'll give you the kind of look where you think you're going to get man, but you're not getting man. That cornerback, he's got help in the defensive backfield, and who does he have help? That is the kind of help when they watch the tape the next day. The, the cornerbacks just love, and you know, a little late by White, but that tends to compound on a quarterback when he knows he's going to spend most of the game on the ground after a pass. Third down, eight Jets go with four wide. Corbett comes back inside as a blocker if they need him. He slips out in the flat. He has it. He's the third down receiver, and he does it again. Well, third down last week was the first time Corbett this year didn't get a catch on third down. He's leading the NFL in third down receptions, and that's just a job of Ron Earhart and the staff creating an opportunity for a guy they know, as you can tell from that right there, number one in the league, they know when it's on third down, he's going to find a way to get open. You could add one more. That is now number 24 on the year for Wayne Corbett. 39-yard line. Gets in their own territory. Opening drive. No score. First down. And here's Morrell with the convoy out in front. He's dead. Ted Washington was waiting on him. Closed him down right at the line of scrimmage. All right, Ted Washington should play with a bad elbow more often. The first right. two times that Jets have tried to run the ball, the, the big peep, the big guy, I guess you'd call him an anchor, but he's a little small for an anchor. Uh, he just tends to find a way to get to the ball. Go work him through Duffy, and, you know, you come back to the line of scrimmage for the cutback, and there's about a 350-pound uh, impediment there right in front of you. I don't think that's small for an anchor. It's a small <laughs> boat and a large anchor. stuff Adrian Morrell. They are going to get those type of things going against the Jets offense. They know what the Jets do best and that is run the ball but this is a Jets team that is in the upper echelon in the league in offense and Richie Kotite knows the reason that team's doing that is because of the running game something that Ron Earhart there the offensive coordinator has always specialized in. Third down five again four wide now they go to five wide receivers. Five wide receivers on the set. Nobody in the pass block. Deep over the middle all along. As Graham has got the first down. Jeff Graham. I'm not sure the Bills' defense could cover the five wide receivers in the set that they were in. Well, Charlie, they did a good job anticipating because they basically had seven, seven defensive backs in. The 19-yard catch there by Graham. Look at all the defensive backs. But, you know, the real key here and concern for the Jets is after this catch, Graham goes down. Remember... Jeff Graham had that big game last week, but he's coming back off of a arthroscopic knee scope a couple weeks ago, so keep your eye on Graham. Buffalo Bills, 36-yard line, opening drive, right to throw. He has pressure. He's got the scramble. Gets it away. Pass is complete. He was being chased by one of the inside linemen, Sam Wright. He was chased by David White, and Sam Rogers makes the tackle on Kyle Brady. For Brady, the tight end, that is only his sixth reception on the year. Out of now, some only 14 passes that have been thrown to him, a bone of contention in the offense. Well, he actually made a comment, said at a meeting with Ron Earhart this week, and said, hey, look, I've got to be more involved in the offense. You've got to throw the tight end position the ball more often. You know, we're not going to the playoffs, but let's open things up. Earhart had a great comeback. He goes, quarterback throws to people that are open. He hasn't been open, but on that play, he was. Second down, 6, 32-yard line. Morrell to the near side. Cuts back inside. Cuts to the outside, inside the 20 and out of bounds. And <laughs> he goes all the way to the stand. He has some friends in the front row. 13 yards on the play. Spielman was chasing him. You know, this is 
a nice job coordinating of the Jets offensive line. Watch Harry Galbraith coming from the backside. Nice lead block by Anderson, a little scrape off by Galbraith. And that's just giving a back like Adrian Morrell that crack, that window he needs. And be patient with the run. You're going to get those kind of plays from Adrian Morrell. You're also going to get some minus ones and zeros, but you got to hang with it. Morrell needing 62 yards to reach the 1,000 yard mark. First down at the 18 yard line. Second back is Richie Anderson. Not a lot there for him. Spielman closes the door immediately. And he would play without his helmet if you gave him a choice. I mean, the only reason he's got to put that thing back on is the league won't let him play without a helmet. Look at that guy. I mean, he is a linebacker. I, I, I like the job this guy has always done. Chin strap broke, right? You know, look at all the tackle he's had. You know, chin strap's busted, but, you know, Spielman's actually getting a chance now to play in more nickel-type situations with the mix-ups they've had in the uh, linebacker position. Marlo Perry has been activated, the linebacker, so you might see him in some passing spots, something he did do in Detroit and did do effectively. Wright turns around and he calls a timeout. So we'll stop the clock for a moment. We have no score. We'll step aside. We'll be back in just a moment in Buffalo. By Staples, the office superstore. By Wrangler, real, comfortable, jeans. And by Taco Bell. There's nothing ordinary about it. Taco Bell. We are back in Buffalo, a very, very cold day. This will be the 10th play of the drive. Wright completing four of five. Graham, two receptions for 24 yards. Good protection, a little lob pass over the middle. It's Graham inside the five, and he'll be smothered at about the two-yard line. Jeff Graham coming off of that outstanding game last week, brought down here by Ken Irvin. He picks up 14 yards last week. He had nine receptions for 189 yards and two touchdowns. Well, what they did was they Three dragged touchdowns. Keyshawn Johnson, who was in the slot, and then they bring back Graham behind him. And you see that pad in the hole area that created into the defense. Another good job of this Jets offense just executing what is obviously part of the game plan coming in. You know, Ron Earhart and Richie Kotite knew, saw something on the tapes, and right now in the opening drive, Frank Rack and this offense are executing it perfectly. First down, goal to go, two-yard line. Here's Morrell. Nothing there. Sean Price into the shore of the defense for the Buffalo Bills is there. Well, you're going into the heart of that Buffalo Bills defense. You know, Price is going to be there, but you know Spillman's going to be there. You know Ted Washington's going to be there. You got Stevens, the rookie, 23, the safety, jumping over that pile late. I mean, if you attack this Bills defense, I think you're better going to the flanks. Because look at the guys you're running up into the teeth. Second down, goal to go. Three tight ends. We'll have flags flying everywhere. There was a, they're going to call a procedure penalty. Motion Fire penalty. No play. All start. Number 69. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. And the officials did something that we have not seen often enough this year. When they had the, everybody converged, they ran in. The officials got in the middle of the play. They stopped everything from yeah. happening. Well, two things happened. Harry Boatswain moved, and the second he flinched, I mean, even moved a muscle, Bruce Smith. Look at Bruce Smith. He's so it, quick. It does not take much. He's looking for a blink, much less a quiver. And as soon as he saw that quiver, he went. Second down, goal to go still, but now at the seven-yard line. And you're in a more of a conventional offensive formation instead of the goal line one before. Graham on the left, Keyshawn Johnson on the right. Going to the tight end, it is incomplete. Kyle Brady cannot hang on to it. Chris Spielman is draped all over. Well, so far for Kyle Brady in uh, this offense, it's been asked and you shall receive. He complained about not being going to, going to enough, and he's got himself a reception. He's got himself a couple good blocks on runs for Adrian Morrell, and he's the A guy right here on this thing for Frank Reich. But, you know, that's a tough catch. I mean, you're throwing through a forest of arms, and the forest of arms influences the quarterback, but it also influences that receiver getting a good look at that ball. Last week, the Jets on third down, four for 15. That's not nearly good enough. Here comes blitz pressure from the outside. Good protection going into the corner. Nobody is there. Well, once nice again, going to Kyle Brady, Charlie. Three. Going to the tight end in that far corner. He couldn't get there in time. That's 
it's the third time he's been thrown to. He has one reception. Well, you know, they're trying to create something in the defense. They're trying to move Keyshawn Johnson in motion, drag him across, and create a hole for Frank Reich to drop the ball on the backside of the end zone, and he didn't get that much of a hole to throw it to, but he did get good, good protection, as you saw there. Here's Nick Lowry with a field goal attempt from the 15-yard line and attempt for 25 yards. Well within his range. Opening drive, the Jets, the Jets cap it with a field goal and three points. They take the early lead. The Jets out in front of the Bills, 3-0. Back with the kickoff in a moment. This is the NFL on NBC. At the top of the telecast, we mentioned that it was cold. How cold is it? Well, the temperature is 28, but notice the wind chill, 14 to 14 degrees. Uh, the one I like to look at is that forecast, flurries. But it doesn't say flurries of what? Well, flurries is scary. <laughs> Eric Moles and Russell Copeland are the deep backs on the return as Don Silvestri kicks it away. And here is Copeland for the Buffalo Bills as they will have an opportunity now to move on offense for the first time. As Jim Kelly, the quarterback, brings him out. Last eight games, he's thrown only three interceptions. Quite a turnaround. He's getting a good job on this offensive line, but it is hurt. All those guys are suffering from little injuries. Corey Lucci gets the start for John Fina, who's been at inactive and couldn't answer the bell, but we could see some, injury, some injury substitutions in that line also. And there they are, the three wide receivers set, known as the K-Gun, starting this game off. They open instead with four wide receivers. The Bills on first down from their own 25-yard line open with four wide receivers. Kelly over the middle. Pass is complete. This is Tasker. Tasker giving ground. Breaks it clean down the sideline. The foot race is on. He's inside the 30. He is going to be caught from behind. Cannot quite make it on the first offensive play. Wow, Charlie. That is coming out in surprising a defense. You come out in four wide receivers, and you're looking for a mismatch. Where's the mismatch? It's a wide receiver catching a ball underneath, running against linebacker. And watch Thurman Thomas, number 34, look for the block. Then down the sideline, here comes Gary Jones, number 25. Uh, yeah, it's just a job right there by Jones of finally getting a shoelace, you know, on, on Tasker. And, you see, this is well, number one. He is not really taunting anybody or making signals. He's asking for an offensive substitution from the sideline with that hand action. 62 yards on the opening play. Gary Jones is still down on the sideline. He caught him from behind. He really had to close on him. He did the same thing that Aaron Glenn did last week. Well, yeah, and that's no small task either. I mean, Steve Tasker, known for years as, you know, the, the all-pro selection, the Pro Bowl selection on special teams, has been so involved the last couple of years in this offense as a wide receiver, and it's made a huge amount of difference. And a lot of players tend to underestimate the speed of T Steve Tasker. But as you saw there, it took everything Gary Jones had from that safety spot to run him down. I don't have to call that a run him down. I mean, catch his shoe. He can quite shoe. run the rest of them uh, down. Yeah. You, know, you know what Tasker's telling all of his friends? That's the longest reception in my career. And it is. He said, that's, that's it. That's what it is. That's just yeah. what it is. Over you know what they're going to be telling him tomorrow when they watch <laughs> tapes? You got I God. Ran, I ran you down. A guy named Jones ran you down? I thought you were supposed to be fast. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you can only be a hero for 10 seconds, right, with, with your teammates? Well, now you're looking at a situation with the Buffalo Bills, though, Charlie. They're going to come back in something a lot more conventional, and that means to them, that means two tight ends, one wide receiver, and a lead fullback. 13-yard line, first down. Thurman Thomas inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Lonnie Young with the tackle. Let's look quickly at that New York Jet defense. That are, they are being tested early on in this ballgame. And no group will be tested more on a regular basis than these four guys up front. Hugh Douglas getting a chance, like we said, and going against Corey Lucci. But they run the ball like that. Pass, runs, pass rush becomes null and void. And really, coverage and run support from the linebackers and safeties becomes more important. Jason Bratton, who was just activated, a rookie free agent from Grambling, came off of the practice squad. 
is now in, and he carries Bobby Houston with the tackle. You know, this is a Bills offense earlier this year that in the red zone, they stunk. I mean, they did things terrible. But look what they've done the last four games. Importantly, they're getting down here and they're scoring touchdown. And 70% plus in touchdown in the red zone is excellent. They're down in three. We had a jet step into the neutral zone. Was there movement by the offensive line drawing him into the neutral zone? Encroachment, number 94, defense. Half the distance to the goal line, third down. Yeah, drawing him with a flinch, Charlie. The defensive linemen, they get, they get in there and they make this motion. Watch the motion right here. And Was that it? makes Ken Hull sort of move back. Years ago, that was clearly going to be offside against the offense. That rule was changed a year or two ago where the defender could actually be called for pulling the offensive player off. Matt Brock is the man who draws the infraction. In encroachment, you have to move across the neutral zone and make contact. A first down. Prior to the ball being snapped. Bob McElwee is the referee. Of course, they had that when I was playing. I mean, they used to be able to do that stemming, sliding the defense, and they jump at you mm -hmm. and make you try to jump. What, what Richie Kotite's defense needs right here, they need a big play on this play right here. It's third and short. Split the distance to the goal line. And the big play by the defense may not be big enough. Well, Jason Bratton is carrying Matt Brock, who had the infraction, leads the defense for the Jets. Well, Brock made the play, got into the backfield and made the tackle, but unfortunately for the Jets' defense, he also got a short little brief ride from Bratton. And Bratton gets the first down on that quick handoff from Jim Kelly. Robert Coons checks into the offensive set for Buffalo. They, they say we want to make it official. The Bills already figured they have the first down. It'll be first down and goal to go. They send in their third tight end. Buffalo offense is completely different than what you've seen out of Marv Levy's team in the past. This is an offensive team that wants to just play power football. They want to run the ball 45, 50 times in a game. They'd be perfectly happy throwing 20 passes, and they're going to just try to bludgeon you instead of beating you with style like they used to. Here's Thurman Thomas to the near side. Cuts back, and he has stopped around the two-yard line. Lonnie Young moving up from the secondary helps out on the play. You got a jet player down on the ground. Back with the safety number 21. Victor Green. Ball at the two yard line. 525 and counting. Time remaining. We're in the first quarter. Jets are up. 3-0. They scored on their opening drive with a field goal. And we have whistles. Number 86 offense. Five yard penalty, second down. That was on Tony Klein, the tight end. Derek Holmes is back in as the lead blocker. He's now the fullback for Buffalo. I mean, maybe it's cold and guys start kind of shivering and quivering in here in the offensive line and want to get hurry up and, and just get it. I, I don't know. I just didn't look like it was a exactly your huge mass movement off the line of scrimmage. You know, Tony Klein there is tight end out of Stanford. Dad played defensive end for the Raiders. Short time played defensive end for the 49ers when I was there. So they're not exactly the family uh, genes to be playing on that side of the ball. Second down, Bratton back in at fullback. Here's Thurman Thomas. Thomas to the five-yard line. That will be all that he gets. That was second down and goal to go. And again, Matt Brock right in the middle of things. He's trying to do his Chris, Chris Spielman act, trying to play without the helmet. Maybe you can play that little Balaclava. Blackie, that little black. Was that Balaclava? Balaclava. Balaclava. Oh, okay. I don't you're know. Going, I think you're going big words on. No, that's a rock. You know, see the way Thurman was kind of twisted down. down there on yeah. the ground, and he's still down on the ground after that one. Thurman, of course, as most of you know, needs 117 yards rushing. 
for his eighth consecutive 1,000-yard season. Barry Sanders today needing 18 yards to become the first man in history. And Thurman, we would figure then would become the second man in NFL history. But right now, this is not good news for the Buffalo Bills. We're going to step aside for a moment. We'll be back in Buffalo. Watch what happens at the end of this play on the tackle. Watch the left foot. Hmm. Right there, gets caught right underneath Matt Brock, 94, as he was tackling him. And just twisted that thing pretty severely, and look. Third down, goal to go. Kelly has pressure, throws incomplete. Flag is down on the far side. Andre Reed, the intended receiver. The Jets lined up offside, Charlie. Man, bad mental mistake oh. lining up offsides on a third down like that for Richie Kotite's defense. Remember it's third down and goal to go. Oh, that wasn't lined up. I'm wrong. That was Washington jumping early on uh, Jim Kelly's staccato call there. And Good defense by the Jets. I mean, they were all over Kelly. Made him throw that thing away late, but Kelly, uh, Offside, number 97 defense. Half the distance to the goal line. Third down. That's a, that, Jim Kelly now a couple of times has, has pulled the Jets off by changing his cadence or his counters. Hut, hut, hut. Let's, uh, let's see if we can pick him up this time when they come to the line of scrimmage to see exactly what he is doing. Well, he, he does that a lot. He's one of the better quarterbacks in the league along with fellow, fellow class of 93 uh, guys, uh, Dan Marino and uh, John, Elway. John Elway in Denver. They can really emphasize that first one. They can get you on the first one because the ball's coming on the second. Uh, this time he goes on first down, throws into the corner, it's caught, touchdown, Buffalo. Andre Reed, that is his fourth touchdown of the year. And so the Bills on their opening drive counter the Jets' field goal and take the lead 6-0 with the extra point to come. Hey, all this is, Charlie, is Jim Kelly having faith in Andre Reed, knowing if he throws it near him, He's going to get it. Not bad coverage by Glenn. I mean, Aaron Glenn is right there. But Kelly knows Reed is going to get that ball from his defender wall. Steve Christie adds the point after, and Buffalo takes the lead. The Bills are out in front by a score of 7-3 to three with 4-17. That is the time remaining here in the first quarter. Back for the kickoff in a moment. take you to Baltimore where the Ravens have jumped on top of Jacksonville. Mark Brunel throws his league leading 19th interception. Mike Caldwell picks it off and goes 45 yards for the touchdown with the extra point. Baltimore in the lead. 7-0 over the Jaguars, Charlie. And here in Buffalo, the Bills are in the lead by a score of 7-3. Thank you for that update, Greg. Oh, it's cold here, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, that's my, gotta, lips, my lips are starting to hurt. That's going to influence people like you know Jumbo Elliott and David Williams with the calf in the back. When it's this cold, you tighten up an injury a lot faster. Three wide receivers is Adrian Morrell. Morrell off the left side. He has the corner, has the first down. He's out of bounds, has 11 yards. First down at the 32-yard line. Thomas Smith, the cornerback, was chasing him. You know, this Buffalo defense, I think, came into this game with no misconceptions about what kind of an offense they were going against. This Jess offense not only has the ability to throw the ball the way they have with Graham and Keyshawn, they're going to throw Adrian Morrell at you, and obviously that patience is there for Ron Earhart and Richie Kotite. You saw Adrian Morrell just sort of, if I had only turned that corner just a little bit more. Morrell has rushed for 26 yards already in the ball game. It's a first down. Right to throw. And it's pulled in by Graham. Having another great game, just like he did against Indianapolis last week. Back-to-back -back first down. Jeff Burris with the tackle. This one good for 14 yards. You know, once again, you've got to emphasize the job I think this Jets offensive line is doing. That's what's getting Reich the ability to get the ball down the field and get it to the receivers like Graham, like Keyshawn, like Corbett. Right now, Jumbo Elliott against Bruce Smith and specifically David Williams working on the other side against Phil Hansen are doing a nice job of pass protecting the right. Three wide receivers on the first down set. Bills lead at 7-3. Here's Morrell. He's got a yard. He now needs 35 yards to reach the 1,000-yard mark. Chris Spielman with the tackle. 
This is a give your body up style of defense though for the Buffalo Bills. I mean, Ted Washington gives his body up just so the linebackers can run to the ball. And once he gives his body up, he knows darn well he's got a guy like Spielman behind him who, you know, he looks for every chance to give up his body at the supermarket, much less in a football <laughs> field. I mean, he'll throw he'll throw his he'll throw his body in the aisle nine in the vegetables, the canned vegetables and fruit if he gets a shot. Battling grocery carts. Second down. the fourth time that they've gone to him in the ball game. So all of a sudden he's becoming a force in the offense, at least in the early going. Well, right about now he's got to be coming back to the huddle saying, well man, if I just had to ask for the ball, I'd have asked for the ball a lot earlier. But, you know, he's getting open. open. You're he's right. getting into the spots in the defense and Frank Reich is finding him. The tight ends have not been open that often in the offense earlier. He not only asked to be thrown to, he's finding a way to get open. First down, 36-yard line of Buffalo. Second drive of the ball game by the Jets. Right side is Morrell. That's back. He has close to 10 yards. They're going to mark it, I believe, at the 27-yard line. and go for nine. Bruce Smith was there to bring him down. You know, not only is Kyle Brady doing a nice job today, I think, catching the ball, you watch what he's doing right here, blocking for Adrian Morrell. Line up the tight end position, working on Phil Hansen, the defensive end. It's that block on the defensive end that enables them to cut back. And then Roger Duffy working on Ted Washington gets a good push, and that's why Morrell gets those extra yards. Just over a minute, time remaining, first quarter. Three wide receivers. Deshaun in the slot left, going down the sideline. Graham is there, but it's picked off. Just lurking in the wings was Kurt Schultz. Perfect timing to pick off the pass. He lured Frank Reich into throwing it, and he was there. You know, what, nice it play. what it really is, Charlie, is they're mixing up. Wade Phillips, the defensive coordinator, is giving him some blitz with man. He's giving him zone blitz. This is pure zone. Look at Schultz sitting on the numbers. He stood, sat on the numbers until it looked like Reich was staring at Graham. And as soon as he saw that, he started heading for the ball. And, you know, that, that was easy for, for Schultz. I mean, Schultz has to look at the tape tomorrow and go, well, it's sort of one for me because, you know, on the other side of the field, Frank Reich is going, hey, look, I never saw him. You know, I know he was there, but I didn't see him. Eight-yard line, Bill start in deep in their own territory. This is their second time on offense, and the first time they went to, to Tasker for 62 yards, but this time they hand off to Derek Holmes. Here is an update on Thurman Thomas, and it is good news, and that it is a deep sprain is the first report, not as bad as everyone thought that it could be, so that is good news. Well, he's not exactly going to be leaping off that no. heated bench and dancing anytime soon, I, I think, to show he's all right. I mean, that that is a pretty good twist on that angle oh, yeah. for Thurman Thomas, and Marv Levy and his staff would be very careful about getting him back in. Kelly going deep, wide open behind everybody, and he is overthrown Russell Copeland. Copeland just snuck out, and nobody went with him. Uh, this is, look at Jim. Oh, Jim. Jim. Look at this, Jim Baccarelli, the, Baccarelli, the defensive coordinator, going to settle down. Not a big deal. They didn't hurt us on that one. Well, they almost they, did. They were, I mean, Whoa. he was wide Whoa. open. He just burst through. I Watch don't... the linebackers and the defensive backs just hesitate, and when they hesitate, Kelly throws the ball. Just, just a sit-up wasn't much of a, a play-action fake. They just sat on the route, and when they sat, he went. That's the first pass that Kelly has missed. Not to a good defensive play. Excellent defensive play. That was Marcus Coleman, the rookie. Steve Tasker, the intended receiver. Well, last week against Indianapolis, Marcus Coleman had some big plays on defense filling in in exactly these types of situations. And Kelly's throwing another one of those faith passes, this time to Tasker, saying, I know my guy, I'll throw it tight, he'll come up with it. But Greenwood gets that left hand and swats it out. So the Jet defense is held, and Chris Moore will kick it away. Wayne Corbett is the return man. <laughs> Pretty good kick, doesn't turn over, sails. Mistake. 20 yard mistake. Hey, the further back you go, Charlie, the worse the news gets, too. 
we're taking volunteers. Wait a minute, no. So yeah. it'll, it'll uh, he'll lose a yard on the play. That'll get a, that'll get a coach and an offensive coordinator shaking their heads. Mm, yes. That's right up there. We're jumping off sides. Second down and eleven. Morrell, the remaining back. Right, that's a great play. That is a great play, and I'll tell you why. Right knew he felt the pressure coming, and he knew he had to get rid of it. Or else Bruce Smith was going to be all over him for a second. Well, and he just put it in the direction of Well, Charlie, it's it's designed it's designed yeah. as a screen. Yeah. Jumbo Elliott isn't able to quite slow Bruce Smith up enough. But, I mean, the screen was there. If Elliott could have just slowed him up just a little more, Reich would have been able to get that path a lot more accurately. And look at Bruce Smith there. I mean, that takes – your metabolism has slowed way down when you get to the point at 14 degrees in this wind, you don't wear a shirt. I mean, you're, 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 getting, towards, you're getting towards Eskimo or Arctic Circle type people when you wear a shirt play shirt in this one. Jets were out of time on the play clock, so they take a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. Buffalo leads by four. Charge against hunger program by NASDAQ and by Coors Light, proud partner of the John Wayne Cancer Institute and their search for a cure. This is Charlie Jones, Randy Cross, 1426, time remaining in the first half. The Buffalo Bills in front of the New York Jets by a score of 7-3. side. This one is intercepted. Second interception by the Bills and the second one by Kurt Schultz. And he was wide open. And he hit him right between the numbers. Well, you know, Charlie, if you look at this thing, they line up Buffalo Bills to, and they look like a four-man rush. But watch Hanson, 90. He drops out. He's going into a zone for a linebacker. That's zone blitz. I think Frank Reich was thinking, man, getting the blitz. And that's not what he got. He got a zone. Look at the defensive backs. They're falling off into a zone, and Reich was not expecting Schultz to be right there underneath Keyshawn Johnson. Well-disguised defense for Wade Phillips and the Buffalo Bills. Second interception for Kurt Schultz and his fourth of the season. And the Bills start at the Jets' 24-yard line. Check in with Greg Gumbel in New York City for an update, Greg. All right, Charlie, and I'll be happy to take you to Foxborough, where the Patriots have regained the scoring touch. Up 3-0 already with a field goal. Look at how wide open Sean Jefferson is for Drew Bledsoe's 13-yard touchdown pass with the extra point. 10-0, Patriots lead Indianapolis. Under 10 minutes to play first half, Charlie. And as we come back, Derek Holmes has just carried for Buffalo, and he has been stopped by Hugh Douglas. By the way, we also want to pass on congratulations to Barry Sanders. Sanders with a 22-yard touchdown run that tied the Detroit-Chicago game at 14, went over 1,000 yards for the eighth consecutive year. That is the first time in history, that, uh, the history of the National Football League, that that has been done. Shy of the end zone, underthrown, stop, come back, wait there, guess who? Andre Reed has his second touchdown of the ballgame, 22 yards. Uh, the Jets defense could not believe that play. They got pressure on Jim Kelly. They gave him every reason not to come up with a good pass. And you know what? He looks back on it. He won't think this is a good pass. He's getting the pressure from Hugh Douglas. He smacks him, throws a weather balloon up for grabs. Watch Reed go into the defensive backfield. Talk about freezing. Everybody else keeps running. He stops for the ball. He could have fair caught it. And the extra point is good. And the Buffalo Bills have stretched the margin. They lead the Jets 14 to 3. And it is taken by the up back. That's Alex Van Dyke. The Eric Smedley with the tackle. Eric Smedley makes the tackle. And there is but Andre the Reed now the with five touchdowns on the year. And that brings his total 
receptions to 751. And he passes his wide receivers coach here with the Buffalo Bills, Charlie Joyner, a Hall of Famer. Chargers. They jumped off to a 14-point lead last week. Couldn't hold it against Tampa. We'll see what they can do against the Chiefs. Still plenty of time to play in the first game. All right, thank you, Greg. As Kelly serves up an interception to Victor, uh, Victor Green. No turnabout is fair play. Right, and the ball was tipped, too. I mean, that ball didn't end up anywhere near where Jim Kelly was trying to throw it. That is a case of Good defensive football. Good fundamentals you work on in training camp, you know. Marvin Levy's quarterback, Jim Kelly, works on it. Well, Jim Vaccarelli, the defensive coordinator, works on it with his guys with the Jets. Watch the arms. Hands up. You can't get there. Get your hands up. Washington was there. I think Brock got it just at the last second as it passed him by, and that's why Green gets the interception. And I think Marvin Jones deflected just a little bit as it was coming down right into the hands of Victor Green. So the Jets go to work on their own 29-yard line. They trail by a score of 14-3. to Right throws far side. Keyshawn knocked away. Good defensive play. Thomas Smith. Broken up by Thomas Smith. Second and ten. Ron, er Ron Earhart Lane standing on that sideline. You know, sometimes it can be a little dangerous. Watch Smith and... Them good Smith and Keyshawn come to the sideline. Look, guess who that is in the sweatsuit and the green beanie? Solo. That is uh, Ron Earhart. It gets a little dangerous out there, doesn't it, Ron? That'll get Hang you, in there. That'll right. get your attention back in the game, Warren. Keep you warm, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is a fair amount of importance today. Wind chill back to 14. Second down and 10. Oh, we might see a flag. No, we don't. Uh, that was good defense, Charlie. That was a that was a simultaneous strip job with the arms there coming from behind. Just a nice job defensively by Ken Irvin, working man on man against Keyshawn Johnson coming from the left side of the screen right there. Mm, I still thought he got there just a hair early. I, I I think really when you're looking at defensive football, you got to give them some benefit of the doubt when it's that close to being right when the ball gets there. I think that penalty is called way too often, a little too quick. Third down and 10, still at the 29-yard line. Reich has pressure, steps forward, goes deep. Keyshawn is too high. Can't come down with it at the 50-yard line. Bruce Smith is livid. He is in Bob McElwee's ear right now trying to make the point that, hey, Jumbo brought me down. But, but watch Bruce Smith come off the ball and how low he gets. Watch the rip. There's the rip. I mean, Jumbo Elliott's got no choice but to fall on him. He didn't tackle him. He just fell on him. When Bruce Smith gets that rip under there that low, a lineman's got to find a way to use a little weight and gravity and get him down. This kick is short and will be down by the New York Jets. Jeff Burris was the return the man. Flag is down. He decided to stay away from it. You know what this could be? 
Coleman was the end man on the formation. He may have been knocked out of bounds and then came back inbounds and touched the ball. That may be the reason for the Number flag. 42 on the kicking team went out of bounds, came in to touch the football. That will be a five-yard penalty and a re-kick if accepted. You're awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> All right, while they sort this out, here's a reminder that next Sunday, NBC Sports presents more exciting NFL action at 12 noon Eastern time with the NFL on NBC. In game one, watch another AFC showdown. Jim Harbaugh and the Colts will take on the Buffalo Bills. In the second half of our doubleheader, most of you will see the New York Jets as they host the Houston Oilers. Randy and I will be there. Others of you will see the Jeff Hostetler Raiders host Dan Marino and the Dolphins. That's the NFL on NBC next Sunday, starting at 12 noon Eastern time. You know, earlier today on NBC, you heard Chris Collins would talk about the Oakland Raiders. I thought he was absolutely right saying this team this year is looking an awful lot like that Raider team that just tucked into a ball, did a dive, and did a nice big belly flop. Jet, uh, the Buffalo Bills start at their own 28-yard line. As Kelly goes to Lonnie Johnson, his tight end, and Victor Green is there to wrap him up right at the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be second down and 10. Check of the clock. 11 minutes and 47 seconds. Time remaining, we're in the second quarter. Yeah, the Jets are continuing to attack, and when you attack, you're going to get a lot of play action. And one thing that's very important on play action is tackling. Nice job by Green. Kelly, nice little touch pass over the middle for the first down to Andre Reed. You know, you can't call this a hurry up. I think you call this kind of a stroll up offense. When you stroll up and the defense is trying to get set, sometimes you get the matchups you want. Jim Kelly got a matchup there with Reed on a quick little slant action. Three receptions, 39 yards for a touchdown. Last one good for 14 yards. Buffalo now with four wide receivers in this set. And we got whistles before the snap. Do we have timeout? Timeout was called. New York. Were they short a man? Third and last charge timeout. No, they had 11. They still have a timeout. Didn't have the right 11. We'll be back in just a moment. the Broncos as they host the Seahawks or regional action the NFL on NBC next Sunday why are they using all those timeouts one two three four five wide receivers a linebacker and Bobby Houston the linebacker wisely calls a timeout they didn't have the right defense they had 11 players but the wrong 11 for that defense against five wide Eric Holmes gets the call here just across the 45 yard line Bobby Hamilton with the tackle. And now Buffalo shows four wide. And nothing there for Derek Holmes. Nice play by Lonnie Young moving up in the secondary and cutting him down. Moving way up in the secondary. Lonnie Young had to be 15 yards deep and on the snap. He came screaming to the ball. Left side of the screen, 44. Look how deep he is. Mm -hmm. That is great recognition. That shows you a guy that has watched tape during the week, seen a formation, and as soon as that ball snapped, he knows where the ball's going. Third down and nine. Five wide receivers here. Flag is down. Kelly kind of works his way out, completes the pass to Derek Holmes as he goes down, but we've got flags all around. Ray Mickens makes the tackle. Jets were offside. They're making too many mental mistakes, aren't they? Offside, number 97. Defense. Marvin Our Washington. Yard, third down. And, and it comes from all kinds of different places. Now, I made the comment today earlier it, it, when we were doing the show with Kongsworth and the guys and Greg Gumbel that you know I thought this was a, a undisciplined team that doesn't have enough li leadership. And mistakes like this, especially coming on those types of situations, is just a discipline problem. I mean, Richie Kotite and the staff. I mean, you lose hair and go crazy. Look at him. He's trying to say Kelly's drawing him off. But well, Kelly hey, is. I tell you what. No, wrong. The ball doesn't move. A defensive lineman doesn't jump. It's tough. But last time I checked, uh, Richie's guys are pretty well compensated to stay in the darn stance so the ball moves. No, but Kelly's smart enough to change his cadence. <laughs> <laughs> He's out smarting him with his voice and well, with his head snap. Good teams don't do that. You're right. Inside hand off to Derrick Holmes, and Holmes is bumped out of bounds. Jets defense holds, so 
so that means that Chris Moore will come in to kick it away for Buffalo. In case you joined us late, the Jets taking the early lead, opening drive, and they go down, then there's Stymie. Nick Larry with a 25-yard field goal. The Bills come right back to take the lead, 7-3, and then following an interception, they score again. Two touchdown passes to Andre Reed. The Bills are up 14-3. Here's the kick. Oh, this is a beauty. Whoa! Wayne Trebet will circle away, and it's going to be down in the field of play at about the one-yard line. Everything working in the first half for the Buffalo Bills. Oh, perfectly. And Marion Kerner, he, obviously he gets the bounce off a great punt by Moore, but he just is standing on about the half-yard line, one-yard line. I mean, that's an easy one, but, I mean, that's having the discipline of being where the heck you're supposed to be. I mean, you're supposed to be there. Nice job or nice try by Irvin to getting that ball into the end zone, but what a bounce. Irvin was down. They get the bounce. Yeah, and the key Kerner is, though, there, yes. he was where he was supposed the to be. Key. That's the whole key. You're absolutely right. That's team discipline. So the Jets, rather than the touchback at the 20, they now start from their own one-yard line. And, Charlie, that's also now being in a hole, listening to a bunch of noise for Reich and this offense backed up here. has the tackle on the play, a gain of 13. Bruce Smith was ready. He was going to pass rush. He was getting in the backfield. He was ready. Watch what Jumbo Elliott does right here on this matchup. You want to see a great one-on-one -on -one block? Oh, boy. Yeah, here's a, here's a, you know, they call that in college a pancake, but here in the pros, that's called earning your money the right way. That's doing what you're supposed to do. That one was for Olivia Ann, his new daughter. who was born on Wednesday at 6 pounds, 11 ounces, wide lease. Everyone is doing well. Jumbo is doing well with that last block. Here's Adrian Morrell, the ball carrier, and he is brought down by Phil Hansen. Hey, and remember, you've had some turnovers by the Jets, but this offensive line, I think, is doing a very nice job, well illustrated by that job that Jumbo Elliott did. And, you know, this, guy, this group of guys has been banged up, but they're getting the yards. They went left side over Jumbo last time. This time they get a good block from Roger Duffy on Ted Washington. They get, a, they get some good push out of David Williams and Matt O'Dwyer on the other side. So, you know, you can blame a lot of things that have happened, but you can't blame anything on that line right now. They're doing a heck of a job. Anderson comes outside in motion. Going deep over the middle, and it is caught. And it's Fred Baxter, the number two tight end for the Jets. In a double tight end set, Kurt Schultz and Covington with a tackle. 23 yards, and just a moment ago, the Jets with their own one-yard line. Hey, you know, Baxter, right side of the screen, 84, lines up and just heads right up that seam in the defense. Being chased in the coverage right there, and it didn't really seem to affect him because he got the ball dropped in just perfectly by Frank Wright. You know, Dar Damian kept calling Covington was right there, but Wright put it right down the hole. First down, Jets their own 43-yard line. Seven and a half minutes left to go. First half is Morrell. And Adrian to about the 46, maybe the 47-yard line where Phil Hansen brings him down. Well, Morrell and the running backs for the New York Jets will take an ice bath tomorrow when they get back to the Jets facility because when you run the ball on a consistent basis against this defense, you are going to earn your yards. You're not going to get real rich running against these guys, but what it does is it really sets things up for Frank Reich and the receivers. If you can run the ball, you can play action. If you can play action, you can get big plays. And now, Adrian Morrell needs only four yards. We come to third. 1,000-yard rusher in jet history. Right to throw. Good protection. Underneath the coverage. Pass is complete. And stretching out for all that he is worth is Wayne Gravel. That was second down. Usually makes that move on third down. Well, you know, very, very important to the protection there for Frank Reich. Great he was job. completely Third alone back one. there. Bruce Smith got there in the general vicinity late, but Frank Reich is getting the protection from the offensive line. Watch Jumbo Elliott right there working against Bruce Smith. You know, you push, push, and that, that's not even pressure. That's just incidental contact. Here is an update on the San Diego, Kansas City game. Don't count out the Chargers. They are leading the Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium now by a score of 21 to nothing. Adrian Mell off, uh, Morrell off to the right side. He got three. Did he get four? 
44 for the Jets. We're checking for the uh, well, official Balls statistician. He's right at it. If he doesn't have it then, he'll have it the next time. Ball's being spotted, Charlie, just past the 45-yard line. Just over the other side of the 45-yard line. So, I mean, another good job on that right side. Good job of push by the Jets' offense. That is four yards officially. That is 1,000 yards. First time the Jets have had a 1,000-yard rusher since Freeman McNeil. Only the third Jet. McNeil did it twice. That's right. John Riggins did it once. Here's Morrell. Jet Washington. And Damian Covington push him back. Yeah, one thing you're going to start seeing here out of this Buffalo defense and Jets offensive line is things could get start getting a little nasty. You know, if they insist on just smashing the ball at Wade Phillips' defense, too cold to be nasty. No, oh, don't, don't be in nasty is cold weather. You don't get you don't get nasty in hot weather. That burns up too many calories and too much energy. But you can get nasty for days when it's this cold. Just you to can keep, play keep you warm. You can play two games. It helps keep you keep, keep you warm. They're going to start swinging and punching and kicking. Be a warm nasty. Reich has pressure and he's going down. That is the first sack today by the Buffalo Bills. Bruce Smith was part of it. And how do you do it, <laughs> Charlie? Accepting the accolade. Yeah, I mean, how do you do it? If you're having a hard time getting over Jumbo on that outside, well, they do what Buffalo does. They move him around and they stun him. And on that stunt, oh, they had... Clean. Well, Whoa. Jumbo Elliott is going inside to try to get Bruce Smith, and Galbraith, the left guard, is coming out. See that? And Bruce Smith comes completely clean. That is bad coordination. And on the all-time sack list, 138. And he keeps going up and up. He ain't going to catch Reggie anytime soon, but they both have the NFL record with 10 seasons of 10 sacks or more. Five wide receivers for the Jets, and we've got whistles. Of course, we haven't heard from Deacon Jones yet. That's against the Jets, another mistake that cost him five yards. Deacon says, uh, you know, of course, Deacon Jones, the, uh, the great defensive lineman, along with Lamar Lundy, and uh, Merlin Olson, and who was the fourth? Uh, the fourth uh, Bruce Bruce about Greer. Thank you. Um, the, 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 stat, the sack stat was not kept in. You were watching it. No, they weren't. They weren't considered sacks. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's an all-time record. They don't count him. I guess they don't count. But, I mean, he was, Deacon Jones is the best pass rusher who ever lived. Again, five wide receivers. But the flag was not yeah. thrown, but the whistle was blown on the near side yeah. by the side judge. The official couldn't get the judge out of it, couldn't get the flag out of his pocket. He was Frozen. trying to. Ball start. Frozen flag. Part of the snap. 76 That's on Jumbo. They're fucking here no more. They're allowed to jump and close this off. What did he say? He says, if I can't hear, are they still allowed to jump off? Watch that Jumbo Elliott coming off the ball. In his defense, it is loud here, and Bruce Smith is gone. Yeah. That was a barely a rock. Oh, yeah. I mean, but it is. It's a rock. Yeah, it's it a is. rock, definitely. I mean, but, uh, you know, with this kind of crowd noise, yeah. and you got Bruce Smith out there who's got, you know, all fast twitch muscle fiber. There's oh, no yeah. slow twitch in Bruce Smith, and he will twitch when you twitch. Third down and 27. Here's the screen. Pass is complete. Richie Anderson behind the screen, and he is going to come about eight yards shy of the first down. As he moves to the 43-yard line of Buffalo, where Ken Urban makes the tackle. Brian Hansen comes in. Yeah, that, that was a nice call, watch. though, Charlie. Yes, you, you've had some rapid reverse going in your offense with penalties, and, and you call it three. And what they did there is they, they used some of that fast switch muscle fiber of Bruce Smith. They pulled him on the field, they cut him, and they ran the screen right on top of him. Jeff Burroughs is the punt returner. Straight up and straight back and straight down. Fair catch is called for and taken at the 14 yard line. Not as good as you can do unless you get the great bounce that the Buffalo Bills got earlier. Bills lead it 14 to 3. Back in a moment. 16 yard line. Jordan Derry holds it up the middle and he has five yards to the 20 yard line. Victor Green stops him at that point. Yeah, you know, players see guys like that. You know, Bruce Smith will see a guy like that every week if he dresses like that, you know. And I, I guarantee you he'll come on the field and he'll look over and his buddies on defense and go, your, your guy's back again. He's yeah, I, I see him. I, I, see him. See him. <laughs> I see him. Just ignore him. Maybe he'll go away. Holmes <laughs> carries <laughs> again. Good news on Thurman Thomas. Their x-ray's negative, but he will not be returning today. You know, one thing, and that is good news.
for Buffalo. But one thing you have to point out here, Charlie, the great job that the New York Jets offense did, backed way up by that Chris Moore punt. And they went against Bruce Smith in this defense of Buffalo. They banged the ball all the way out. And now they've got Buffalo backed up in a little hole. Game of field position. Now they go deep. And it is into blue. Well, look at that. They want a little interference here in Buffalo. They're screaming and yelling about guys falling on their legs. And Ask of the intended receiver. Yeah, you got a little Greenwood. incidental contact. That happens. Guys trip. Guys fall. See, you got, you got Greenwood working down the field. He starts to turn. That is not illegal. That is not a penalty. I mean, you got to start giving these defensive guys that kind of leeway. I'm getting sick and tired of everything being slanted towards the offense. And that's hard for me to say because I played offense. All right, Chris Moore. This is high and George Trebet under it. Fair catch. And he has this one at the 33-yard line. And with that play, 157 left. That means a two-minute warning. We've got a timeout. Back in a moment. Bills lead by 11. Well, 
in every there's got to be an idiot. Every section section in a stadium in a city like this has a designated idiot. The designated idiot takes his shirt off. We're taking volunteers at the booth. <laughs> Kelly fires and it is caught into, tra into traffic. Quinn Early has the reception. He had two receivers in the same area. Two defenders were also there. Pass is complete. Three wide receivers. This is the K-Gun. They're just running their normal offense, so there's no hurry up. They're just getting the thing done. They do it a little bit quicker. Kelly lob pass as he is going down to Steve Tasker. Nice play. And he'll stop the clock with a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. Bills are up by 11. That is a veteran really running this new offense well. Marvin Hoyt breaks all over him. Here comes the blitz. Step forward. Steps forward. Still caught. Nice catch by Tasker. More importantly, Charlie Tasker gets out of bounds. And Another veteran play. And Victor Green tried to bat it away, and Tasker held on. Wait, now watch the end. You want to talk about a receiver who suddenly remembers, oh, yeah, I'm getting out of bounds. Look at this. He, he goes up, he cuts up the field, and then he says, oh, where's the sideline? I get my extra yards, but I'm also getting the first down and get out of bounds. Tasker, three receptions, matching his uniform number, 89 yards. 35-yard line, Jets. 55 seconds time remaining first half. <laughs> Buffalo has one timeout remaining. <laughs> Kelly throws to him, drops it in. It's Andre Reed slipping one tackle and then out of bounds. He stops the clock. 12 yard long. Well, when Jim Kelly's got this thing going with Andre Reed and they got the timing working, it's a beautiful thing to watch. You know, here's a quarterback that's, I think, really to be commended. Everyone in the world, especially up here in northern New York, was ripping this guy a new one at the beginning of the year, just saying he's too old, he can't throw. What's this guy done? He's taken it all. Those same people, by the way, now that he's playing well, are patting him on the back. But, I mean, this guy has got the arm still to play in this offense. He throws 25 passes. They're going to pound the ball. He's adjusted perfectly. Kelly has completed 9 of 13. That's I mean, like you say, they want to throw 20, maybe 25 top. 9 of 13. Here, of course, we'll see a little bit more because they'll be working against the clock at the end of the half. 157 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, and, and for me to say something like that, I obviously catch a lot of grief from some people. Go, hey, look, look at his stats. He's got X number of interceptions. He's got all these interceptions and not many touchdowns. But, you know, he got off to a bad start. He had a horrendous couple of games. You know, one up here against Miami. He had that Monday night game against Pittsburgh, and things were going terrible. We saw him the first time they played the Jets the night before the game, and it's about as down as I've ever seen this guy. But since that time, when they really started going back to the no huddle, using their new style of offense, not the old style, the new style without a huddle, it's been a totally different Buffalo offense, a totally different Jim Kelly. And here, of course, you look to Andre Reed, number 83 for the Buffalo Bills. Two touchdown receptions in the ballgame. He has caught four for 61. Favorite target of Jim Kelly, of course, as that duo continues to combine for scoring plays. First down, 12-yard line, 48 seconds left first half. Trying to mix it up on the ground. Nothing is there for Derrick Gong. He's going to get a couple of yards to the 10. Trying to spread the jet defense. Now, here's where the hurry up offense that they are so used to yeah. doing pays off. And we've plenty of time, Charlie. I mean, this offense can get a playoff in 15 seconds, no problem. Even with an audible, he's going to get it off in 15 seconds. So it's 40 left. It's 26, 25. Ken Hull is center had to turn and look to see. Pump fake flag is down. Kelly is down. Clock is stopped. 21 seconds. Yeah. Timing is the best friend of an That's offense that. and a quarterback. and. Sometimes timing can be the worst because you start getting off the ball late and turn around and don't know where to go with it. Gets people in bad positions. And when linemen get in bad positions, they hold. Holding. Holding. Number 79, offense. On Reuben Ten Brown, the guard. Second down. Reuben Brown, one of the many offensive linemen 
for the Buffalo Bills, who was hurt this week, didn't practice much with a bad ankle. Ostrowski, number 60, limping a little bit right now. He also was hurt this week, he didn't practice much. Right on the left-hand side of the screen, you see Reuben Brown do a little, uh, little takedown job just out of the screen as he got twisted around. Ball place at the 20-yard line. Goes to the corner on a deep fade pattern, and it's there for a touchdown. Steve Tasker. And Kelly comes up limping. Yeah, he's been hit an awful lot. I mean, they've gotten him low. They've grabbed him by the legs. They got a shot on him there. But when you're having this kind of a day, I don't like the chances of uh, trying to tell Mr. Kelly that uh, he has to come out of a ball game. This is not a guy who's got the, uh, the best wheels in the world. He doesn't move around. Great. He tends to be a target in the pocket. He's a bit of a target there. He isn't hit too bad by Douglas, but looks like he kind of caught a cramp. How do you cramp it with 14 degrees? Extra point is good, and Buffalo moves up by a score of 21 to 3 over the New York Jets. We still have 15 seconds. That is the time remaining in the first half. Here's a program note as Kelly comes up limping. Yeah, now watch what happens. Watch what happens here, Charlie. You know, when the ball goes up, it's everybody's ball. But you know, so far today, when the ball's gone up anywhere near the end zone, it's been the guys in blues ball because the defensive backs for the Jets either have been late or haven't looked. And here is Kelly. He's just going into the locker room early. He's completed 10 of 14 for 176. Three touchdowns, and he leads the music. He cranks up the band as he goes into halftime. Meanwhile, Tasker's full reception, 108 yards in a touchdown. Remember, he had that big 62-yard reception right out of the box. Well, 108's a great game, much less a good half. That it is. You know, once again, we're coming up at halftime, the guys at the studio can do that, running up the score and get the highlights going on the, what's happening earlier today. And, yeah, I really want to see what Ditka and Gibbs have to say about that running up the score thing. Because uh, I seem to remember both those teams adhering to the old saying that, uh, you know, never hit a man when he's down, kick him, it's easier. Those Redskins <laughs> used to pound on people, and I think my Ditka's Bears, and uh, specifically 85, were known to score a few touchdowns on people late in the game when maybe they didn't necessarily need to. Steve Christie is going to kick it away. And he just squirts it through. That's one of those high bouncers. The clock starts when the ball has been touched in the field of uh, play, so that'll run off five seconds. That's Kyle Brady, the tight end, that comes up with it. Kyle Brady has touched the ball first more today the in the first half than he has in the entire rest of the season I coming right. up to today. So uh, He's been a participant. That's hey, what they expected. Kyle's working hard to block. He's working hard to get open, but I keep having those meetings with the offensive coaches if I was Kyle in the tight end, pointing out that uh, the tight end position is allowed to catch, too. Well, they've thrown, they've thrown to him four times, and he's pulled in two of them. 48-yard line in their own territory. They send a Hail Mary down the right side, right close, and he's going to be sacked. Yeah, Hanson and Bruce Smith, look at that high-low, and Reich is down. He had to buy some time to allow his three wide receivers to get to the end zone. Charlie That's Reich. what they were doing. And, uh, Reich got hammered. He, he is did. down. He got a triple pancake on top of him by the linebackers of the Bills that were chasing. Bruce Smith was there. Phil Hanson was also there. It wasn't the guy he could see that got him. It was the Bruce Smith from the back that he couldn't see that delivered the blow. And Bruce Smith, after a slow start, and this defense really came to work in the last half of the second quarter against Frank Reich and this offense. Dangerous one is the one you can hear but not see. Well, here you go. I mean, at the end here, he can see Phil Hansen. See, he's avoiding Phil Hansen. Whoops. Hello. Hello. Bruce Smith's been awful top on Jets quarterbacks today. He knocked Boomer out last year. It's been a tough time. We'll be going to New York, but first, these messages from your local station in the world.